December 28th, 2017. International Falls, Minnesota drops to a record low of 36 degrees below zero. That must feel like death itself. At least to me it would. I can't stand the cold weather. That is why I moved to Florida. Um, and honestly, I've had this premonition for a long time to get to warmer climate. It's been something that's been inside of me. And I grew up in Connecticut. So we did have cold weather for sure. Um, but what we're having now is, is not temporary. And so this is out of um, North Carolina. And this is an article talking about the weather not being temporary, the cold weather. And it's showing some docks and some boats and some beautiful snow. So again, 20 degrees below average temperatures in North Carolina as well and this is out of Boston and again it's it's showing that the record cold weather is going to be sticking around into 2018 and again record cold temperatures forecast high 13 degrees so that's going to break the record in Boston and Worcester six degree high as opposed to the record of 15. So very, very cold wind chills, 10 to 25 below zero. And growing up, up up in Connecticut, I was used to very cold weather. And then I lived in Ohio and it was even worse. I couldn't believe how cold the temps got there. And I know there's far worse places than that. Um, this is talking about the next grand minimum. And what is a grand minimum? It's it's the activity level of the sun. And what we're going through is a period we are heading towards a solar minimum. Now, solar minimums come about every 11 years as well as a solar maximum. It, it's an 11-year cycle with the sun. But yet, the last cycle was very, very unusual. And the sun is going through something that is not a typical solar cycle so it's it's actually weaker than to be expected with far less activity and when we talk about minimum we're talking about like sunspot levels and that's indicative of the energy levels that the sun is putting out and this talks about exactly what does that mean so cosmic rays, high energy particles raining down from exploded stars, knock electrons out of air molecules. This produces ions, you know, positive and negatively charged molecules in the atmosphere. The ions help aerosols, clusters of mainly sulfuric acid and water molecules to form and become stable against evaporation. This process is called nucle nucleation. The small aerosols need to grow nearly a million times in mass in order to have an effect on clouds. The second role of ions is that they accelerate the growth of the small aerosols into cloud co condensation nuclei, seeds in which liquid water droplets form to make clouds. The more ions, the more aerosols become cloud condensation nuclei. This is the second property of ions, which is the new result published in Nature Communications. Low clouds made with liquid water droplets cool the Earth's surface. Variations in the sun's magnetic activity alter the influx of cosmic rays to Earth. When the sun is lazy, magnetically speaking, like as in a solar minimum, there are more cosmic rays and more low clouds, and the world is cooler. When the sun is active, fewer, fewer cosmic rays reach the Earth, and with fewer low clouds, the world warms up. The implications of the study suggest that the mechanisms can have affected the climate changes observed in the 20th century. The coolings and warmings of around 2 degrees Celsius that have occurred repeatedly over the past 10,000 years as the sun's activity and the cosmic ray influx have varied. The much larger variations of up to 10 degrees Celsius, that's a big difference. When you're talking 10 degrees Celsius in climate change, that's huge occurring as the sun and the earth travel through the galaxy visiting regions with varying numbers of exploding stars. So it really depends on where we are in the galaxy and, and as we've heard from many sources 
and so many of these sources are channeled sources, sources that we wouldn't necessarily believe in, um, foreseen by you know seers like Edgar Casey and Nostradamus and others. Uh, so we wouldn't necessarily put big stock in it. But what they have been saying for many, many years, sometimes hundreds of years, is that you know we are chain we are heading into an area of the galaxy that is very energetic and it's going to cause tremendous earth changes like we haven't seen in thousands of years um probably as we know there are major major cataclysmic changes that occur on the planet regularly we could see that whole civilizations have just poofed and vanished and then we've restarted later on and this happens regularly this is the downside of this planet that we live on and perhaps of life everywhere is that everything is always in change and flux so the theories that you know man made climate change is going to destroy the planet is given man too much power uh, because this is all natural cycles we do have an effect on climate but the earth can shake us off like fleas if it wants to and uh, we could either act as a virus or we could act in a symbiotic relationship to it but either way we're almost inconsequential we we are really just bacteria living in the earth just like bacteria is in your body yes bacteria could eventually kill you uh, but most of the time the immune system modulates and regulates things and so the earth and the sun you know we are traveling into a highly energetic area of the universe that is going to cause tremendous changes and we're seeing the changes and the powers that be know these changes are are already happening so we have many things going on right now many many things are going on and what we're heading towards is you know going to be known as more of a little ice age and um it's something that happens periodically and in this case it has to do with a magnetic pole reversal which is underway and um this talks about sunspots and how they're magnetic storms and we got to realize too we are in the protective embrace of the sun's magnetic discharge and if that discharge did not exist there would be no life here we would be bombarded by cosmic rays and it would just be too radioactive we would not be able to live so we are protected by the sun and yet that protection is waning because the sun is going into a very very period of minimal activity so it won't disappear entirely the sun's protective embrace yet when the earth goes through a magnetic reversal there is a period in which there's very little if no protection of time so you know we will be exposed to tremendous amounts of radiation and um, this is when life has gone inside the planet and, and that's why there's these tremendous caves and tunnels and places to live inside the planet you know to lower the exposure to the radiation and the bombardment that we're going to receive but neutrinos pass through the entire planet itself so it's going to affect everything anyway um so this is out of the sun sun on a brink of plunging into a deep solar minimum which could cause parts of the earth's atmosphere to collapse so you know a little extremism and a little bit of um trying to scare people here perhaps you know but it's definitely something to be concerned about so we are heading into a period of record record solar lows you know we are going to see tremendous changes tremendous changes in the weather and that's going to be the norm and we just have to adjust and get used to it as best as we can 
And there was a brief period back in uh, 08 where it dipped some. Uh, and this is going to be more severe as we go. What's really interesting too is that the rotational rate of the sun has slowed and the rotational rate of the earth is slowing as well. So these, these are all things that happen in conjunction with each other. And the solar minimum is coming and also the grand solar minimum is probably coming. There's less people, <coughs> less scientists talking about the grand than the solar minimum because the solar minimum is a given. It happens every 11 years. <clears throat> but the grand solar minimum is a little bit more risky for a scientist to come out and state, although there are quite a few now coming out and saying that that's what we're heading towards, a grand solar minimum. So it's definitely going to be something that's going to affect us. And what can we do about it? That's the big question. Um, one thing is, if you're living in areas that are colder, it's going to get even colder yet. So, you know, have a backup system for sure. You know, like a wood burning stove, um, maybe have propane installed, um, other systems to keep yourself warm, to keep things going. As with anything, just be prepared. We all need to be a little bit more of a prepper these days. So this is talking about how a new study is showing how rapidly Earth's magnetic field is changing. And it's changing very, very rapidly. It's getting weaker in some parts and strengthening in others. And this is part of what happens because like when the sun has a magnetic pole reversal, there'll become more than one north pole and more than one south pole as it's trying to find its new equal equilibrium. And the same thing is happening here on Earth. And it's very, very um, fascinating and interesting. The field is weakening around 10 times faster than initially thought, losing approximately 5% of its strength every decade. And they don't really know why or what that means for the planet. The most likely explanations for what we're seeing is our magnetic poles are getting ready to flip, something that happens once every 100,000 years or so. And that sounds a lot scarier than it really is. Well, it depends. It really depends on where you are. And this is, does an anomaly in the Earth's magnetic field pretend a coming pole reversal? And that is what's coming. And that would explain all the visions of Earth changes that all these psychics have seen from, you know, Gordon Michael Scallion, Edgar Cayce, Nostradamus, um, so many more people um, have seen this. Remote viewers have seen this for the governments, and that's why the governments are making their provisions for themselves. Because you know the elite will be hid out in the most comfortable bunkers possible. They know what's coming. And what we're in the beginnings of. So they are making their plans. And as we see, you know, normally you have a North Pole and a South Pole. What happens during a reversal is there's multiple poles that develop. You could have three or four North Poles and South Poles. And as it finds its equilibrium, and then the South becomes the North and the North becomes the South. So it's very interesting and obviously it's going to change the entire planet just like the changes that happened in the times of Lemuria and Atlantis and Mew we know that there's flash frozen woolly mammoths and saber-toothed tigers that had their last meal not even digested yet in their stomachs so what Scientists will say, it was, oh, these things take so long to happen. You know, it could be hundreds of years, thousands of years before it's finally done. Yes, but at the same time, we know how instantaneous it was that so many creatures got flash frozen when it happened last. And if the reports are true about Antarctica finding the bodies that were humanoid and also were flash frozen, it could happen so quick that even people with high technology won't get a warning. 
So again, what can we do? Well, I guess, you know, pray that your intuition will be good and keep your eyes open as well as make any sort of preps you can. So as this is saying, the strength of the Earth's magnetic field has been decreasing for at least the last 160 years at an alarming rate. The collapse is centered in a huge expanse of the southern hemisphere, extending from Zimbabwe to Chile. And it's known as the South Atlantic Anomaly. The magnetic field strength is so weak there that it's a hazard for satellites that orbit above that region. The field no longer protects them from radiation, which interferes with satellite electronics. And the field is continuing to grow weaker, potentially portending even more dramatic events, including global reversal of the magnetic poles. Such a major change would affect all our navigational systems as well as the transmission of electricity. And the spectacle of the northern lights might appear at different latitudes. And because more radiation would reach the Earth's surface under very low field strengths during a global reversal, it could affect rates of cancer. And what they're not going to tell you is it could also affect your DNA. It could cause mutations. And perhaps these reversals are part of what has caused mutations in the past that are naturally occurring and not genetically manipulated like with what happened with the Anunnaki. So from many sources and traditions, we know, as it says in the Bible, in a twinkling of an eye, we will all be changed. And there are so many traditions that talk about a great solar flash as well and this solar flash could happen during the changes in the Sun which is also giving us the changes in the earth and they are expecting the solar flash to happen you know within most of our lifetimes many are thinking it's going to happen within the next 10 years and possibly within the next five years I don't think anybody knows for sure, but the governments are scrambling and making their provisions. So when the flash occurs, we will not really have any protection. As we know, our magnetic field is just decreasing so rapidly. So we're going to be exposed to all this radiation. And it's going to change us as a species. And it, from what is told it will basically amplify where you are at mm -hmm. so we need to try to hold positive energies and try to work on ourselves in a spiritual manner so that we're not affected in a negative way because we create our own reality that's what we know from quantum physics and it's what's been taught in the east forever and in the hidden mystery traditions so consciousness is extremely powerful and all that we truly are is consciousness you know consciousness is everything everything is energy and our bodies are nothing but vehicles and they're about to change and we are constantly evolving if at a minute small slow level but what we are going to be hit with energetically is something which happens just a very very long intervals and this article is talking about the North Pole slowly moving towards London now and they say it's due to changes in the level of water on the dry land basically and so the North Pole will become the South Pole when they flip so you might end up with London being the center of the South Pole at the moment. And this could keep moving and it might change. It's changed directions many times. But the Earth of the future is probably going to look extremely different <coughs> than the Earth of today. <coughs> Excuse me. As different as the Earth of Pangaea looked from the Earth of today. The one thing that is constant is change. And <clears throat> another recent article, or multiple articles, came out about the fact that the Earth rotation is slowing down. So that's going to give us a lot more earthquakes and volcanic activity. 
And again, the volcanic activity is going to speed up and increase the rate of cooling. So global cooling is actually scarier than global warming in many respects because it's going to limit the amount of area we could actually grow food. So we need to really, instead of being spending so much money on the militaries that we spend, it would really behoove us as a people if we were building our own greenhouses on a massive scale that could protect the vegetation from the elements and allow it to grow in places where it may be growing now but may not be able to grow tomorrow or even transforming and terraforming on a large scale but we spend so much money wasting it on the military that we're going to end up with huge portions of the populations probably starving to death but yet we'll all be very well armed or at least the United States will so uptick in earthquakes yes we we see that an uptick in volcanic activity yes this was just an interesting article um, that somebody wrote about earth being not some random accident it was by design and um, he says I'm an avid viewer at the science channel on demand and here's what I've learned from astrophysicists and cosmologists on these programs first our solar systems location is estimated to be 28,000 to 20, 26 to 28,000 light years from the center of our galaxy. The Milky Way, scientists say the Sun is one of the rare stars located in what is called the galactic co rotation radius, meaning that we are located between two of the spiral arms instead of within one of the spiral arms. Second, being between the spiral arms puts us in a location that's safer than almost anywhere else in the galaxy. We are farther from the deadly effects of supernova explosions and other deadly forces that are common within the mo more densely crowded arms. Third, the Earth is located within the habitable, z habitable zone of our solar system. Any closer to the sun we cook, any farther away we freeze. This allows for liquid water to exist on the surface, and we have an atmosphere just heavy enough to keep the water from evaporating and support life. Fourth, the Earth has a magnetic field unique in the solar system. It produces the Van Allen radiation shield that protects us from the charged particles, commonly called the solar wind, emitting from the sun. Fifth, the solar wind extends out nearly 1 billion miles from the sun to the very edge of the solar system. The solar wind acts as a barrier to dangerous interstellar radiation that could destroy all life on Earth. Lastly, the Earth has a huge moon in relation to the size of the Earth. The moon stabilizes the Earth's tilt, critical to regulating our seasons. And if we didn't even have the tilt, we wouldn't have the seasons. And there are, there is evidence that there was a time when we didn't have the tilt, when we didn't have the seasons, too, And if you look deep into a lot of um, legends. And since its formation, scientists believe the moon's gravity has slowed the Earth's rotation speed. He says from once every eight hours, from what I've read, they think it was once every two to three hours before. Can you imagine if a day was two or three hours long? Which that rotational speed being that fast would create surface winds in excess of 500 miles an hour to once every 24 hours. So change any one of these facts and life doesn't exist on Earth. Did this all happen by accident or by, or by design? As a Christian, he believes it was by design. For everyone else, I follow the age-old dilemma, which came first, the chicken or the egg. To get the chicken, you have to have the egg. But to get the egg, you will have to have a chicken. I bet this gave Darwin a headache. So, we don't have to be Christians or Muslims or anything. We could just simply, well, give, that give gratitude or blame it on extraterrestrials or higher intelligence beings because it does appear that things have been regulated and modified here on earth so that life can exist and it does appear that we are a farm of sorts and an experiment so we can only hope that they will help protect us against the natural calamities that come and it does appear that they for the most part, at least keep a remnant going when disaster comes. 
or introduce a new species to the planet. So it's all very, very interesting. I hope you guys found this interesting. Uh, please give it a thumbs up if you do. Um, and share with as many people as you can. And subscribe if you have not subscribed to get more updates and more interesting, hopefully very interesting, thought-provoking info. I so appreciate all your patronage. Thank you so much for joining me once again at Evolutionary Energy Arts. Take care.